Our first look at the Joker origin movie reveals more than you think. The first trailer for Joker dropped on Wednesday and caused more of a splash than, well, the Joker falling into a vat of toxic waste. It's our first good look at the film and for the most part fans seem to be on board. And while it seems like a pretty standard origin story, hidden amongst all the jokes, the green hair dye, and the many, many creepy cackles are lots of references, nods, and details you may have missed, so let's dive in. First up, it appears that Joker won't feature the typical origin story for the Clown Prince of Crime, where the Dark Knight's favorite foe gets thrown into a vat of toxic chemicals. For one thing, this story will give the Joker a real name, Arthur Fleck. And although there are three different Jokers in the comics, typically we've never heard him called by anything other than that moniker. So this film is creating an original story and giving the character more of a realistic background as opposed to some of the more outrageous origins tied to the character. You want to know how I got these scars? I'm an idea. Comedy podcast master and Joker co-star Mark Maron reinforced this himself in a recent interview with NME, calling the film more of an origin story and a character study of a mentally ill person that becomes the Joker. It's more of an intimate and gritty movie with a very specific scope. Side note to his naming, did you notice that the social worker's name is Deborah Kane? Most likely this is a reference to Bob Kane who created the world of Batman along with Bill Finger. As we continue through the teaser, we see Arthur Fleck's difficult and mundane life caring for his his ailing mother, being bullied all over Gotham City, and being pushed further and further into erratic behavior. But what is it that eventually pushes him over the edge? Based on this teaser, it's safe to assume that Arthur's mother dying could be the catalyst. However, we suspect there could be another potential breaking point, which lines up with another classic film, The King of Comedy. In a blink and you'll miss it moment, you may have noticed that Robert De Niro gets a brief highlight. In this film, he's playing a talk show host along the lines of David Letterman. Now, we've previously heard that during the film, Arthur will attempt to perform on this character's talk show and bomb badly. Now, could this be the moment that breaks him as a character? Surely he can't be so bad if he made it that far. Let's go to the evidence from the teaser and take a look at some of those jokes we saw him writing on his notepad. What did the inmate say to the straitjacket? Loosen up a little. The worst part about having a mental illness is people expect you to behave as if you don't. It's clear these jokes aren't ready for late night at this point in Arthur's career, and speaking of that notepad of jokes, it's worth noting that his handwriting here looks childlike and crude. One might chalk that up to Arthur's descent into madness, but we think there might be another explanation. If you take a close look at the shot before, he's writing with his right hand, but then switches to his left in the next shot. It's possible after all of the beatdowns that he's received on the streets of 1980s Gotham that his writing hand is injured and he is forced to write with his offhand. Also, Seriously, why do so many people specifically want to beat up clowns? What's so funny? Just... Maybe he should take a lesson from Seinfeld's crazy Joe Davola. Nice. Make us laugh, clown. <laughs> <laughs> Also, we're going to venture a guess that the bottle of meds on the desk is not for his ailing mother, but for him instead. Now, as we mentioned earlier, De Niro's appearance is a big throwback to the Martin Scorsese film, The King of Comedy. In that film, De Niro plays Rupert Pupkin, an unsuccessful comic who eventually stalks and kidnaps his idol so that he can get into the spotlight. We see several visual references to the film, from the Joker's shirt pattern on the movie's poster matching a suit jacket worn by Rupert Pupkin to the bright red suits both characters wear. Heck, at one point, Martin Scorsese Stacey himself was even attached to produce Joker, though he left before the film went into production. But of course, this is not just a redo of The King of Comedy. It's still a Joker film, and it wouldn't be a Joker film without some references to the Waynes and Gotham City at large. In the teaser, we get glimpses of the downtrodden, dangerous 80s vibe of Gotham, which feels like a few other crime-plagued major American cities from that time, like New York, Chicago, or Philadelphia. Another reference to the Batman universe we recognized is this wide shot of Arkham State Hospital, aka Arkham Arkham Asylum. We also get a brief glimpse of Thomas Wayne on a TV morning show, who is reportedly a Trumpian-like 80s real estate mogul, a role that briefly went to Alec Baldwin before he left and was replaced by Brett Cullen. Also, if you listen pretty closely, he has the same signature gravelly voice that we've come to know and love in Bruce Wayne. Gotham's lost its way. 
And speaking of the young Wayne, we do catch sight of Bruce Wayne as a kid when he is forced to smile by Arthur Fleck while he is lurking outside of Wayne Manor. So now that we know for sure that the Joker meets Batman in this film, is there any chance it could tie into the greater DCEU? From the start, this film has been marketed as a standalone film, kind of the equivalent of an Elseworlds or DC Black Label comic story existing outside the main storyline and universe. And most likely, this flick will continue to be pushed by Warner Brothers as, you know, just doing its own thing. However, we have a theory that this Joker origin flick could fold into the greater DC Cinematic Universe. Booyah. As we mentioned before, there are three different Jokers coexisting in the comic books right now. Clearly, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker isn't the one who gets thrown into a chemical vat, but it could be that this 80s struggling comedian Joker influences other copycat Jokers in the future, like say, the face tattooing, knife collecting Jared Leto Joker. It's possible, but not likely, as Warner Brothers has basically said they are worrying less and less about the interconnected universe at this time. However, if this film does gangbusters, they may find the need to try and make it work within the DC Cinematic U, and what better way than with the Three Jokers theory? But what do you folks think? Are you excited to see Joker in theaters this October? Which is your favorite Joker? And how crazy is it that Todd Phillips, the director of this movie, also did Old School and The Hangover? Let's discuss. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and mash that little bell to get notified every time we go live with the show or drop a new video. And if you want to take a trip from Gotham to Westeros, check out our latest Nerdist News edition where we break down the theory that Bran will warg into a dragon. Watch it right now.